On the show today, we'll explore how Nigeria plans to improve its business environment this year. As always, you can join the conversation with the hashtag Beyond Market. You can also follow my Twitter handle too, at Esther Ubudaga. Now, the World Bank listed Nigeria among the top 10 global reformers as the country ranked 145th on the ease of doing business. The areas of reforms covered starting a business, dealing with construction permits, registering a property, getting credit, and paying taxes. Jumoke Oduwale, coordinator of the Enabling Business Environment Secretariat, joins me to discuss Nigeria's plans to improve the business environment this year. Jumoke, thank you so much. You're Pleasure. welcome. Pleasure to have you yeah. on the show. Well, I guess the smile is, is in order. <laughs> I mean, if we look at what uh, you achieved, what was achieved in 2017, mm -hmm. uh, going into 2018. But I'd like us to, I mean, for, just to pre, um, create some context for those who are mm -hmm. trying to you know, catch up with this conversation. S a brief summary of what 2017 was like and how you, you, know, you were able to achieve that mm -hmm. ranking from, you know, yeah, thanks for having me, Esther. It's a pleasure to be here again. 2017 was really the year that we put the strategy into motion. And what it did was to prove that if you do the right thing, you properly plan and you're coordinated and you collaborate across government lines, across public, private sector, national assembly, state governments, you actually can achieve results. It's one economy, the Nigerian economy. We decided to have that holistic approach, and around this time last year, February, we launched our first 60-day national action plan. It's an accelerator for uh, 60 days exactly, and you list out what you want to work on, and several MDAs, about 15 of them, you have an action plan, and you really just focus and go at it. Uh, what it did was help us to track and to make sure that what's being done is what is required for SMEs. So we use the Doing Business uh, Scorecard as a, as a baseline. We believe that the World Bank uh, Doing Business Report is a good starting point because it ranks 190 countries and it's a, it's a level playing field. But we are going beyond the rankings. Some of the things we work on have nothing to do with the World Bank, but everything okay. to do with SMEs in Nigeria. Okay, now, so. before we go into some of the specific areas, the, uh, your areas of focus for 2017, now usually there's that, there's policy and then there's that time lag mm -hmm. when one is expected to have the impact. For the 60 days, did you experience that or how were you sure that within those 60 days you were, able, you were going to have the desired, yeah. you know, So this impact? project started late 2015. So 2016 was really a year of scoping deciding what, and we don't, we don't make any noise about it whatsoever, but for the first time we were able to stem the tide and moved up one place, one place. But what that did was give us understanding of what we're dealing with and what SMEs, we did a lot of stakeholder engagements, listening to SMEs and getting the feedback. So we had a lot of preparation, we had decided what we were going to work on, and so January 2017 was like ready, set, go. Okay. So f still on the, your areas of focus for 2017, there's five of them. Let's start with starting a business. Maybe just one. what changed? What is that one thing? Starting a thing business, I think the most significant thing that changed was being able to register a business online. We still have a last step regulatory-wise, legislative-wise, that you have to come and pick up your certificate. But from searching the name search to reserving the name, to actually filling the forms and uploading them, you can now do all that online, and it's 48-hour timeline. What about registering a business? Um, registering property. But property, I, I Registering property, it's, it's, it's a state government initiative, so we worked with Lagos and Kano State. For instance, in, in Lagos State, you have them having a number of reforms on their land bureau, making things more, governor's consent is 30 days, and trying to make sure that that's implemented. It's work in progress. We're able to make sure that that keeps happening. Removing things like the need for a sworn affidavit, okay. that was done, and that gave us some points. Just little bureaucratic steps that really don't need to be there. So we worked very closely with Lagos State on implementing that. And, and was that your chat. biggest challenge? Because I know that issues about land, registering a property, or just land. You mentioned governor's consent. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've had people on this show, on the, all our shows, talk about, and it's just not good stories about how you know the difficulties they have with you know acquiring the land, getting the governor's consent, or just CFO. And I'm just thinking, is it different now? Yeah, I mean, it's the case worldwide. But I must say that Lagos State has been working on this for quite some time. It's not a new initiative. The governor's consent is now delegated to, I believe, five commissioners. And the timeline that His Excellency set is 30 days. 
So it's now a matter of making sure that that happens. There are a number of processes that do have to happen, but streamlining the processes, a, a whole overhaul of the land uh, bureau, it's now being automated. It's, it just basically looks like a new banking hall to make sure that people can come in and actually work on systems and do the search of what they want to get done. So this is all work in progress, but this is the direction, and we are beginning to see the results. Okay. And let's just take one more, uh, getting credit, between getting credit and paying taxes. Oh, tempting. Okay, let me go with getting credit. And the reason is that Nigeria now ranks sixth in the world in our business climate for getting credit. And this was really achieved by a strong collaboration with the National Assembly. In February, exactly a year ago, we had an expanded uh, Presidential Enabling Business Environment Council meeting and the Senate President and the Right Honorable Speaker were in attendance and committed to working with the federal government to pass two legislations to make sure that we have an enabling environment for getting credit. So now you can have um, credit histories. The credit bureaus can actually give credit histories to individuals and that helps you make a credit um, ranking okay. that, that you can now negotiate your credit rates cool. like everywhere around the world. And also the National Collateral Registry under the Central Bank of Nigeria makes it such that you can register uh, with financial institutions, can register charges on, say for instance, movable properties for movable mm -hmm. property. Because the problem was that a lot of SMEs don't have landed property. Mm -hmm. They have factories, equipment, and all that. So you can now use that as collateral because it's registered on the registry. So you can't leave Lagos and go to Kano and get another loan on the same piece of equipment. So it's comfort for lenders. Okay, what would you say, two things, what would you say was the biggest hurdle, the biggest challenge from a policy perspective, I mean, looking mm. at the targets that you had for last year, the biggest challenge? Um, I think sustainability. So you can have a 60-day accelerator intervention you work with public and civil servants. We work together on this. The MDAs that we work with nominate reform champions to work with the reform leaders. We come up with the action plans together and meet very regularly, at least weekly. And this is across agencies. So the, the model is different. It's very collaborative. We meet once a week in our office. You have about six MDAs on a particular issue. I mean, the noise level does get quite high, all the blame games. But at the end of the day, after a few weeks of doing that, Agencies understand each other better and start committing to supporting each other to deliver better service. And I think um, we've made a lot of traction with that model. Okay. Now the thing is, of course, we're a council. How do we entrench that? So His Excellency signed an executive order, Executive Order 1 on transparency and efficiency targeted at public and civil service delivery to Nigerians, uh, to anybody doing business in Nigeria. And what that does is it underpins within the, the structure some of the rules and regulations and directives. So the way a single interface at the airport, single inf interface at the seaport, so customs has to lead um, NAFDAQ, SUN, all the other agencies to do joint inspections. Mm. Things like that, as opposed to individual agencies organizing inspections, which is very stressful for an importer or an exporter. So when you have an executive order directing that within the, the rank and file of civil and public service, then we know that sustainability is now, it's now measuring okay. uh, and making sure that there's consequence management and there's also recognition. Okay, yeah. let's go into 2018 now. I mm. mean, that one big achievement. Were, were you hoping to, I mean, when, you saw, when the rankings came out, were you hoping to have done better or were you saying, I mean, this is something? Yeah. So I think, I think it's interesting that the work we did in February to April and then the executive order and pin it by, by June, the work that delivered the 24 points was done. So by July, we scaled the project. We went to national. We started some other things that we'll, we'll talk about shortly. But when the rankings came out on the 31st of October. We were actually, if you recall, in the middle of a second national action plan. And that second national action plan is targeted at next year's rankings, well, this year now's this rankings, year, yeah. and reforms. So we now have some homegrown trading within Nigeria, which is a whole homegrown reform area. 
because when you engage with stakeholders about trading across borders, they're like, you know, it's actually pretty difficult moving my <laughs> goods within the country and intellectual property and all that. So we were, we were happy. Uh, we didn't try to game the system because it's beyond, our mandate is beyond ranking. So last year, I guess because it was the first time, Mr. President gave us a target to move up 20 spaces. Okay. Yeah. 2018. Yeah. What's the focal point? You have targets. It, 2018, so we're definitely making sure that Nigerians know that this is about impact and sustainability. So we're deepening what we started working on last year and we're in introducing new reforms as well. And then we're, we're launching something very interesting for Nigerians. We've actually had it on beta. We've had it on trial since November. It's a, it's a web-based application. Okay. Yeah, and it's called Pebec.Report. It's on already, but we're just finalizing the back end with all the ministries, agencies, and departments, training their IT people to renew process map when the complaints come in. It's a feedback mechanism. And what it does is it empowers Nigerians to give feedback on eight agencies to start with, where they're doing well, where they're doing not so well, based on what we've announced. So if we announce a 24-hour timeline, or if somebody asks you for a, a documentation that is not official, or if somebody delays your application, you have an avenue to report that comes directly through this project to the council. What about issues yeah. of, I mean, graft corruption? If somebody is asking for something, we how actually, do you report in a manner that's safe and will be, you know that it's going to get to the table of the person who can take action? Yeah. So it's two things. I mean, there also has to be that bit of courage because we have to make sure that it's also fair to the agencies and people are not just um, making false claims. But, but we've already had quite a few uh, reports. You do have to put your name. We do have to be able to get back to you but we do act on it. What we're working on now with the MDAs in the last eight weeks is to make sure that we're committing to a 72-hour timeline. So we're working on practice runs to make sure we're not quite there yet. We've been resolving, but we're not quite with our, with our 72-hour timeline yet. But agencies like CAC, like SUN, have been really responding, FIRS. So um, it's work in progress, but the good news is that we're on track, there's a plan. You have to kind of take things in, in bite size and strategically okay. build on them. We'll talk mm -hmm. more about that. Thank you for your time so far. Hold that thought for us. We'll take a quick okay. break. I've been speaking to Jumoke Oduwale, coordinator of the Enabling Business Environment Secretariat. As we continue our focus on, of course, uh, looking at the ease of doing business this year, still with me is Jumoke Oduwale, coordinator of the Enabling Business Environment Secretariat. Thank you, Jumoke, for your time so far. Mm -hmm. now, let me take you back to the West web-based mm -hmm. feedback and mm -hmm. you said that it's just it's still new yeah but you have been receiving yeah. complaints it's been live since november okay. so the council approved it we've launched everything is ready and we sort of told a few people so we've started getting complaints and resolving them it's a time of training we've been working with the it departments of the mdas because we don't want to just announce something and then they can't deliver at the back end so it's the timelines, all the reforms that we commit to, if an MDA commits to a 24-hour timeline or a 48-hour timeline for a service, and if there's any delay, then a complaint can be... And then if, if an agency uh, surprises you by finishing something in two hours that was supposed to take 48 hours, please do send feedback. Feedback. Yeah, so we, we collect nice, the information. Nice on that. Yes. Well, you, but you say that it's not it's, it's for what, just a certain number of agencies? Yes, we're starting with eight agencies right now. So we work with about 40 agencies, but we, we focus really on about 15 agencies that have a disproportionately large interface with the Nigerian business community public. And we started with eight agencies like NAFDAQ, Police, SON, it, it, it's a, a result of the feedback from SMEs. So we prioritize certain agencies to start with. For the and there's a capacity because I'm just thinking for a, I mean, police, for instance, I would imagine that the complaints, you know, could be a lot more than the others. So, the, mm -hmm. I mean, system capacity mm -hmm. and the ability to perhaps treat and attend to each case mm -hmm. and see it through mm -hmm. to the end. Mm -hmm. So there's a vendor and there's a team, and that's what's now being finalized to scale up. Okay. So we've had the trial phase for about eight weeks, but scale up. The police do have a feedback mechanism of their own, but this is yes. really for business-related, you know, SME-type challenges, and of course, the rent-seeking in the course of trying to access 
um, services. And if I might ask, what do you what do you do? For instance, you have you're treating you're attending to a case, you see to the end, and it's been found that yes, there was some you know maybe money exchange hands or whatever, and you like you said, the police already have their own mm -hmm. uh, portal and all of that. How do you? Do you take it back to them? Or how do you deal with it? How is, how is it resolved? No, these, the agencies are the ones that work on the tickets, oh, okay. that work on the feedback. So okay. it's, you know, okay, I'm so talking there. about now the whole of police complaints in Nigeria. They have avenues for the business and the sort of rent seeking in the course of your moving about okay. for business. Those are the things that come to that. But it is the agencies that solve the complaints directly. We have a dashboard to capture and to watch, okay. and we have a team to make sure that the process flow. So when a ticket comes in, where does it go? And keep into time of the 72 hours. Now let's go deeper into the report. What else? Uh, I, I see collaborating with uh, key stakeholders to implement reforms. Uh, I think you've talked about that. But what else? I mean, I know that you're also looking to deepen reforms across nine indicators. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, well, yesterday, right off the, you know, the press, the NAP 3.0, that's our third okay. national action plan, started. And what it is is, you know, I told you the first one, what we did from February to April last year resulted in 24 places upwards. When you do the actual actions and then you communicates, you make sure that it, it drills down sustainability and impact. So the, the third National Action Plan commenced on the 5th of February, and what is collated is a number of reforms that is a combination of deepening some things that already exist and moving on to things that stakeholders have said are a problem for them. So for instance, we're starting a, a business post-incorporation filings um, have, been, have come up repeatedly. So we're working with CAC to make sure that they adhere to timelines in that department. Um, with uh, FIRS, we're making sure that all companies can now uh, get on the filing e electronic filing pl platform. Okay. Um, so deepening a lot of things like that, also with um, entry and exit of people, with the airports, with the seaports, single interface, making sure that it's streamlined That's how the, it the works. single window platform mentioned. Ah, the single window platform is a different project. That's one of our flagship projects um, for the year. What it is, is it's actually a national trading platform. So most trading countries have a national trading platform that's a combination of the infrastructure that you really need to make your ports function efficiently and your land borders actually and your, and your airports are scanners. Okay. So it's scanners that will make the, the consignments flow quickly and you are able to identify narcotics, arms. So it reduces the amount of agencies that are in the ports and having interface and human contact with importers and exporters. Then you have a single window system, which is a portal, electronic portal, and everybody can see what's going on. So again, much more efficient, saves costs, saves time, and less, more transparent, and saves on you know human contact and rent-seeking opportunities. Now I'm just thinking, are you measuring impact? Mm. Because sometimes you ask people who work in that sector or people who have contact with those agencies, the airport, for instance, a passenger traveling through and then he's stopped by uh, immigration, customs, and, you know, there's this talk about, uh, okay, what you carrying contraband, but I can let you go, but if you just give me something, all those, you know, here and there, moving parts, and you're just wondering, uh, how does that, or how do you deal with things like that? Mm -hmm. Some may go unreported, yeah. and I don't know. Because I feel like yeah. it's still eating to the overall cost. If you're going it to achieve does. something, it does. It could erode it, it along the way. It does, which is why we really need the help of Nigerian public, which is why we have the Pebec Dot report. As a team, we've been getting a lot of feedback um, through organized private sector, uh, through a lot of groups, and also individual companies write letters to the council, to the vice president, and we have to work on them. A lot of regulatory concerns, how the regulators interface with different sectors and sometimes uh, different things, delays in approvals, arbitrary fines, a lot of issues. So we're trying to have a system where we can get empirical data and really know the pain points and address them. So it's really important that people speak up and document. A lot of people take to social media and vent. You know, if you see me in person and you tell me everything bad that NAFDAQ is doing to you, document it. 
That way I have the information. If possible, tell me the time it happened, the name of the person, all the details that will be required to investigate and take necessary well, would action. Would you say that there is general awareness? As average, because for those who it affects, business people, like mm -hmm. those who have contact, regular contact with uh, the standards organization of Nigeria, mm -hmm. do they know? Is it out there in terms of awareness that, yeah. okay, I've found myself in this situation, there this is, is what I, I can, I can do. get help. Yeah, it's a constant challenge. We're trying to reach a lot more people. We have quite a robust communication plan for this year. Last year, we tried quite a bit. Uh, the vice president has SME clinics. He goes around the country, and we have the timetable. So we join that as well. Uh, we try to come on programs like this so that more people are aware. But we, we found out that we really we, our target this year is the SME on the street. So we don't, we, you know, it's like saying the man, it's, yeah, okay. it's like saying the man on the street. We want the people, the basic SMEs that these reforms are targeted at. We get a lot more feedback from more sophisticated businesses, from larger corporates, from multinationals, bigger companies. We're not exactly to, in the majority. Yeah, they're not in the majority, but they're more vocal. And I, I always say they don't like it when I say they have more access to power. But, but this particular project is. It's like a plain vanilla targeted at your ordinary company. And, and, and we really want to target them and make sure that they know that you have these um, reforms, you can get this in 24 hours, you can get this in 48 hours. This amount of documentation has been reduced from nine to five. This is what you need. Websites are working. This is how you can report. So we're really trying to be very active in the media and stakeholder engagements around the country this actually should lead me to the Subnational Ease okay. of Doing Business Initiative. So sometimes we go around the country, we go to mainly Kano and Lagos, and people start asking us, when are you coming to my states? Is this just for Kano and Lagos, just because of World Bank and all that? So we approached the, the National Executive, sorry, the National Economic Council, the NEC, which is a forum of governors, also chaired by the Vice President. I made a presentation to them, the Honorable Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment, who's the Vice Chair of this uh, PEBEC, and I, uh, sold really the, the prototype to the state governors, and they liked the idea. So since August, we've been working with state governors. They all have state reform champions. They now have their own sort of little uh, exco on ease of doing business, and, and states are really doing a phenomenal job. States like Kaduna State, Ogun State, Anambra, quite a lot of governors had keyed in even before we, we but then the collaboration makes it such that we're working in tandem. In tandem. But I know that you, like you say, you, you, you're involved in stakeholder uh, engagements, mm -hmm. but I'm thinking in terms of, I mean, your own capacity mm -hmm. to, to, to even do the job, manpower, mm -hmm. I mean, scaling to ensure that. That's why I asked about you measuring impact, mm -hmm. because sometimes if, if you don't have enough hands, mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. you, you won't get a desired yeah. impact. So is that a challenge? Are you, do you is there <laughs> enough funding? Is there well, enough manpower I mean, to have that impact? Because yeah. otherwise, what's the point? The private sector has really stepped up to the plate. We have a number of people seconded on the team, um, in addition to public sector officials working on this project. It's a transformation office. And the, the truth is we're not supposed to become another government agency. We're not supposed to get that large. The model that I was explaining in the beginning, we work with the MDAs okay. to come up with the plans and just kind of, we're sort of consultants helping to keep focus on your action plan and the KPIs, keeping your eye on the timeline. And our sustainability model is also to change how MDAs work so that when this council is dissolved, if it's okay. dissolved, then you don't have just a big vacuum. That MDAs themselves, and that's where the executive order comes in, that MDAs themselves have sort of discipline to have standard operational procedures, timelines, I mean, and then... We have about less than 60 minutes, 60 yeah. seconds. Wow. Pebeg, what do you want to be, what do you want to hear being said about Pebeg at the end of 2018? Maybe in terms of achievement, we had, of course, the ranking last year, but for this year, what do you want? It's all about impact. Okay. I want everybody to validate what we say, what the MDAs say they've done impact. We want that validation. That's when it makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Well, I will say good luck. Thank you. <laughs> Thank, Thank you very for talking much. to us today. Thanks. That was Jumoke Oduwale, coordinator of the Enabling Business Environment Secretariat.